Um, we move two questions to the Minister for Regional Development. Inform the House that question number nine has been withdrawn. Call Mr. Paul Garv. Question number one, please. Principal Deputy Speaker, in order to get the most competitive uh, electricity prices for street lighting, a tender competition is run each year. Uh, the annual cost of electricity for street lighting varies from year to year depending on the prevailing cost of electricity and the number of street lights and their wattage. In recent years, the annual cost has typically been in excess of £10 million. The outturn costs for the last financial year, 2014 15, are not yet finalised, but I can confirm that in 2013 14, for example, street lighting ele electricity cost just over £10.6 million. I'm glad to say that, uh, like many other electricity consumers, my department has recently seen uh, a reduction in the unit cost of electricity. However, um, it must be recognised that while prices have fallen, the number of street lights uh, that my department is responsible for uh, inevitably grows each year as new housing development uh, and streets and other new roads are, uh, are adopted into the public road network. Call Mr. Gervin for supplementary. Thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, just in relation to uh, technology and the availability of low energy lighting, uh, LED lighting, which is 80% efficient, uh, more efficient than current lighting systems that are being used, has the Department looked at investing in this to save uh, in, the near, in the future? I feel to the member for his. Um supplementary question and indeed uh, I, I'm, I'm very happy to confirm uh, that uh, the department uh, is uh, looking at uh, this uh, issue and proactively uh, we have uh, a major project, uh, pilot project um, in the Banbridge and Craigavon area uh, in relation to it. Um, but I have to say to the member that, that LEDs for street lighting use um, have only recently been developed uh, to the point where they are economically and technically viable uh, when compared to other options, such as the more uh, conventional sodium streetlights. And until uh, very recently, the high capital cost uh, of LED streetlights meant that their widespread use could not be justified. However, uh, prices have fallen uh, uh, by more than half over the past two years, uh, and I've recognised that the time is now right. Uh, to invest in LED technology and on a much larger scale. Uh, sorry, uh, Catherine Lawson. Uh, I wonder could the Minister confirm or otherwise uh, reports of the practice of uh, street lighting being turned off during the hours of darkness in some areas? Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question. I'm not aware of those instances. Uh, and um, uh, and he, if he has evidence uh, uh, of any cases, uh, obviously uh, I'd be interested in, uh, in obtaining that. And, uh, but certainly there is no uh, planned uh, systematic uh, switch off of, of lights uh, at present, even though the resource budget, as he will know, is under considerable pressure. Well, Mr. John Dallet. Uh, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, question at all. Question number two. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, um, I, I, I'd like uh, firstly to acknowledge the uh, valuable services that the community uh, transport operators provide to local communities and their members across Northern Ireland. Uh, rural community transport, transport partnerships can provide access to local essential services such as shopping, post office or local health services such as GP or link in with wider public transport network uh, to travel outside their local area. Um, it would be my intention, subject to EU rules and licensing arrangement, to continue to support uh, these organisations. However, uh, were I uh, support fully uh, the services provided by all community transport service providers, there will unfortunately uh, be a, a, a reduction in the level of funding available. I have tried to minimise this, and it should be noted that during my time as Minister, I have protected uh, the baseline budget for community transport year on year and, where possible, supplemented with in-year funding. I have been working intensively uh, with officials to determine how best to spend the limited resources that are available to me. Uh, the Member will know that my department 
uh, does indeed deliver key water, transport and road services. The population relies on my department services 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, however, I am facing a £60 million pound of, uh, of pressures in this financial year, and the scale of reduction um, required to meet that cannot be delivered without an impact on core services. My department will be working closely with the services, uh, service providers to explore ways of uh, providing the service uh, in a more cost-efficient manner and will seek to minimise the impact to the end user. For supplementary. Deputy Speaker, I have listened very carefully to the Minister and the problems he has in balancing the books, but would the Minister agree with me that in the case of Causeway Community Transport, for example, are facing cuts of over 30 per cent? And would he agree with me that TransLink or no other organisation can fill the gap that will be created when people who require specialist type transport to go to hospitals or to clinics, for example, are left a another case of the most vulnerable being the victims of these vicious austerity cutbacks? Grateful to the member for his, uh, uh, for his supplementary, uh, uh, and I share the concern of the impact, of the potential impact. Let me say that uh, he has uh, suggested that uh, uh, some uh, rural community transport uh, is being cut by uh, a third, 33 per cent. The effective cut in grant uh, to rural community transport uh, is from a baseline amount of 2.75 million to 2.4. This is an 11 per cent reduction. The figure of 33 per cent refers to the position after last year's in-year monitoring rounds are included. And the member will know that I have been successful in previous years in supplementing uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, awards to um, uh, uh, these groups through the monitoring um, rounds. I will continue to do that uh, as we enter this new financial year. Um, uh, and, uh, but I don't underestimate uh, the challenge, but what I am determined to do through my officials is, is to work with uh, the providers and the groups to see uh, it, it, where we can minimise uh, the potential impact. I call Mr George Robinson. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, could I ask the, the Minister to state of community transport services for the rural population, such as those in the Lima Valley area? will be retained re to reduce the impact of social deprivation, isolation and health visits. And I do appreciate um, what his answer was to Mr Dallet. Grateful to the member for his uh, uh, supplementary uh, question. Uh, and you know, there is no uh, uh, proposal or intention by me uh, to, to withdraw <coughs> these services. Uh, but I am facing a fairly critical financial position in terms of my resource budget. The member will know that. This assembly knows that, the executive knows that, uh, and, uh, and uh, we, we, we cannot, I, I cannot spend money that I do not have. In, in saying that, we are working with providers and uh, with, with, with the users to, to try and uh, what, uh, mitigate um, some, of the, some of the issues on the ground. We will continue to do that, and we will continue to do that in all areas, uh, in addition to the area that the member has mentioned. Uh, can, I, can I just, following on from that, ask the minister to maybe confirm the, the success or otherwise of the integrated transport, um, w including the community transport, and particularly in the Mid Ulster area? I'm grateful to the member, and, and uh, I mean, I have no uh, doubt that, that uh, this, this is a successful. Um, uh, uh, these are successful projects uh, which operate very successfully in areas and provide very essential assistance to, uh, uh, to, to people uh, who use the services, whether they use it uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, you know, for social occasions or for, for medical appointments. Uh, regardless of that, uh, um, uh, I certainly accept that, and especially in the rural area, uh, because representing a rural constituency, I'm aware. Uh, of the importance of, of uh, connecting uh, communities uh, and people uh, in, in local areas, and, and, and we'll continue to seek to do that. But it is a challenge given the budget that I currently face. Mr. Robin Swan. 
Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, has the Department tried to source funding from any other avenues? Grateful to the uh, member for his uh, supplementary. Uh, I, I can confirm that the Department made a bid for uh, delivering social change funding uh, of £2 million, some £2 million over the period 2014 to 2016 to extend uh, the services of local rural community transport partnerships in, uh, in the evenings and at weekends. Uh, this uh, initiative has been included as a measure in OFM DFM's draft active ageing strategy, but as yet uh, the Department has not yet uh, received confirmation that it will receive the necessary support uh, from, from these funds. Claire Sogden. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, can I ask the Minister if the cuts to each rural community uh, transport partnership are equal and strategically justified um, across Northern Ireland? Grateful to the member for, for her, um, her, her question. Uh, and, and I don't uh, underestimate uh, the challenge that is before uh, the user groups uh, and the operators. Um, and uh, we have sought to apply the, uh, these uh, as evenly as, as we possibly can. Uh, and uh, that will be the case going forward as we seek to work with groups uh, to address the, uh, the underfunding situation. Uh, and I'm grateful for any, um, any representations that the member may, may wish to bring me. Call Mr. Roy Beggs. Question number three. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, I am committed, uh, as the House will know, uh, to creating a network of, of high-quality, direct, joined-up routes throughout Northern Ireland so that everyone can use uh, the bicycle in their everyday journeys. Uh, I uh, envisage arterial and quiet routes uh, in cities uh, and greenways between urban centres to, to provide links to shops, community facilities, places of education and workplaces. Uh, this will take time to develop, but my department has already begun to uh, work to develop a bicycle network for bicycle for Belfast, which I uh, hope to consult on later this year. Work will then uh, begin on similar plans for other urban areas. Uh, in East Antrim, uh, I'm, ple uh, I'm pleased to be able to confirm that the scheme to provide a, com a combined foot and cycleway along Prince Andrew Way in Carrickfergus is nearing completion. Combined foot and cycleways have also been provided along the length of the A8 duelling scheme between Coleman's Corner and Larne and on the A2 scheme between Jordanstown Road and Station Road, Green Island. Plans are also in hand to extend the cycle route from Station Road to Trippers Lane and on to Carrickfergus. The Department will continue to deliver cycling infrastructure as resources permit in line with the network ad identified in the existing transport plans. Mr. Bergs was supplementary. With the, with the A2 uh, Green Island Road widening scheme nearing completion, and indeed the cycle lane at uh, Prince Andrew Way uh, proceeding, uh, there will be considerable enhancement uh, to cycling within uh, my constituency, and particular linking it uh, to the greater cycling network in Belfast. So, can the minister provide us any more details of of the uh, scheme in Prince Andrew Way? and how it might be extended uh, throughout the rest of the town. Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question and indeed to his enthusiasm uh, for um, uh, cycling and, uh, and, and the cycling revolution, which is uh, uh, well underway and, and, and very uh, uh, enthusiastic support uh, that, that, the, that he gives it, and I know that he is a keen cyclist. In terms of uh, Prince Andrew Way, scheme, the scheme is a two-kilometre continuous, three-metre-wide uh, combined footway cycleway along the uh, north side of Prince Andrew Way in Carrickfergus. This uh, substantial investment um, of over 200,000 in the cycling infrastructure will uh, provide a continuous footway cycleway uh, route between North Road and Craig's Road and will make it easier and safer for people to walk and cycle in Carrickfergus. It is in line with uh, the Department's policy to continue to promote sustainable uh, transport, such as walking and cycling, uh, cycling uh, as, as a healthy, environmentally friendly and cost-effective mode of transport. And importantly, uh, this scheme links uh, several schools in the area and supports uh, my department's active school travel programme, which aims to increase 
uh, the number of pupils travelling to school actively, whether cycling or walking. The programme also improves uh, pupils' general cycling skills and road awareness and their knowledge of the health benefits of cycling and walking. Ultimately, uh, it helps to create a culture of active travel within schools throughout Northern Ireland, uh, and I thank him for, for uh, uh, his enthusiasm for cycling in East Antrim. Mr Ian Mill. Kestlover Cahar, question number four. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, um, my department was not given any specific funding by the Department of Finance and Personnel to resurface or upgrade car parks in advance of their transfer to the new councils, uh, and that remains the case. Uh, from a condition and structural integrity point of view, the car parks that transferred were deemed fit for purpose. They were inspected regularly and were in daily use up to the point of transfer. Any defects identified in the run-up to the 1st of April 2015 handover were prioritised and repaired as the department's resources per, uh, permitted. Following uh, receipt of an additional allocation for routine maintenance in January monitoring, my department did undertake some minor works, such as the renewal of white lining in car parks, where this was deemed necessary for enfor uh, enforcement purposes prior to the handover to the councils. Uh, in addition, engineers carried out a, a special public liability inspection of the car parks and completed any work identified. The member will be aware that uh, the new councils will, um, will have received budget transfers from DFP for the car parks that included uh, an element of funding for maintenance. His own uh, Mid-Ulster District Council took possession of 23 car parks with a net book valuation of £2.5 which are expected to make a profit of some £216,000. Any uh, future maintenance of the car parks that have transferred is now the responsibility of the respective council. Well, Mr. Mullen, first supplement. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answer that he's given thus far, his detailed answer, which he has given. Um, could I ask the Minister how many councils have accepted and how many have declined or even have, un have been undecided uh, in the handover? No, uh, thank the member for his uh, supplementary. Uh, but all, all councils have, uh, have accepted uh, uh, the, uh, the transfer, and in fact, they have also um, accepted that. Um, uh, the uh, arrangements for enforcement will continue uh, until at least um, next year um, uh, when, that, when that current contract operated by uh, the department uh, expires. So, uh, uh, as far as I can see, I think there are aspects of, of policy. Uh, some of the councils, two of the councils, I think, have opted not to uh, continue to pro pro provide the, um, the, the special rate five hours for a pound, which uh, has been so successful uh, in other places. That's a matter entirely for, for those councils to, to decide. Mr Gregory Campbell. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, the Minister will be aware of the particular skills that uh, would have been deployed by personnel in the car parking under the prior arrangement. Uh, would he be aware of councils having requested uh, similar training facilities in order to ensure that that is repeated and replicated in the new system as the councils take control. I thank the member for his uh, supplementary. I'm obviously keen, uh, wherever the department uh, can uh, assist using their experience uh, to benefit uh, the new operators, then uh, uh, we'll continue to do that. As I said in my earlier answer, um, the, uh, uh, most of the, all of the councils um, have um, agreed to use the, the, the enforcement uh, officials and personnel in that method uh, until at least uh, that contract runs out next year. And, uh, but I mean, we stand open to, to assist wherever we can, given now that uh, ultimately the responsibility uh, uh, lies with, with, uh, with the new council. Sir Leslie Craig. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And the Minister will know that the vast majority of the car parts came from the councils at the last reorganisation. But I'm wondering, Minister, if you could explain why the Department for Finance and Personnel top sliced the income surplus. Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member for his uh, supplementary. Um, I, I, I can say that DFP didn't withhold any income, uh, but, but they did offset uh, the surplus from car parking against the budgets for other function, uh, functions transferring. 
Um, and uh, DFP, as the funding body uh, or department for central and local government, um, uh, decided on how the transfer uh, of budget uh, was to be handled. It didn't uh, rest with my department. Patsy McGlone. Gorman, I've got a free last year call you. Thanks very much. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. Uh, would the Minister agree that in some of these instances, the new councils, in effect, bought a pig in a poke uh, whenever this transfer of powers came over, insofar as it's going to be additional cost to them? There's no doubt about it. And indeed, the, the costs and what compensatory measures could the Minister advise were provided to them for the enhancement of those car parking facilities in, in regard to the actual uh, amounts of money that were provided to them? Please. I'm grateful to the, um, uh, to the member for his uh, supplementary question. I don't uh, actually subscribe to his pig in the poke um, comment, uh, and I think that the figures that I quoted earlier to, uh, in, in respect of the Mid Ulster Council were 23, I think, uh, car parks were, were, were transferred with the potential uh, of income of uh, over £200,000, uh, I, I think it is not to be sneezed at or sneered at. Um, and, uh, uh, and what I do say is I think I trust uh, local government to look after uh, and to continue to maintain um, uh, uh, these, these assets, and I think uh, that they will do that. Um, and, you know, uh, I, I, I don't envisage the problems that perhaps uh, the member does. Uh, there was uh, work that was carried out as necessary uh, to uh, various uh, car parks uh, just before transfer took place. But I have to say, based on the record of, of claims against the department for defective services, uh, I, I'm satisfied that, um, that, the, that car parks were transferred in a more than acceptable uh, uh, condition. Mr. Nelson McCoy. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Question number five. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, I can advise that direction signs are generally only used uh, where they will benefit road, servers, uh, road users as an aid to navigation for road safety or for traffic management reasons. The main purpose of a direction sign is to guide road users to their desired de destinations via the most appropriate route at the latter st uh, stages of their journey, uh, particularly where destinations may be difficult to find. Uh, Direction signing is therefore not normally permitted to places of public worship uh, that are located on main urban routes or on rural A and B class roads. However, uh, a place of public worship may be uh, signed where there is clear road safety need for doing so, uh, or all of the following criteria are met. A, that it has a seating capacity in excess of 100 and is open for worship at least once per week throughout the year and B, my department is satisfied that there is obvious difficulty in locating the church building due to its location or remoteness from the main road network or where there are a number of churches in the general vicinity, particularly with similar names. Uh, in such cases, uh, the applicant is expected to pay in advance the full cost of any signing provided, uh, which will become the property of the department. For supplementary. Um, I thank the um, Minister for his answer there. There would be in rural areas um, a number of um, mission halls and gospel halls that fall slightly under the 100 seating capacity number. Uh, probably they would tend to be in the region of just over around 80 mark. Um, would the Minister consider um, reviewing the, the, minimal, or the minimum number in, in terms of seating capacity? Grateful to the uh, member for his uh, supplementary question, and I don't know why I'm smiling, but um, I, 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 th I think there is a distinction between um, the number of people attending and the number of seats that are available. Uh, I think the member gets that, um, and I don't know if there's any creativity. It's difficult sometimes to ask churches to uh, to, to uh, pursue creativity, but um, uh, it's, it's something that I. I, I, I am prepared to look at and I uh, will um, write uh, to the member after due reflection. It may not be immediate, but uh, there are other pressing issues that he, he is aware of. Mr. Samgard. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, uh, question number six. 
Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, I am pleased to confirm that the notice of making, uh, that, that the making of the vesting order for the extension to Millennium Way was published a uh, week commencing the 23rd of March 2015. Uh, the vesting order will become operative on the 28th of April 2015. Uh, the scheme involves the construction of uh, 430 metres of new road between Malcolm Road and Guildford Road and, and uh, upgrading of the existing junctions between Millennium Way, Malcolm Road and Guildford Road, Banbridge Road. The new road, which also accommodates cyclists and pedestrians, will reduce congestion within the area and traffic flows through the residential areas. It is important to point out that construction of the proposal remains subject to the project uh, continuing to have a satisfactory economic appraisal and funding being made available uh, in future budget settlements. Mr. Gardner, first supplementary. Thank you very much. I thank the Minister very much for, for that report, and I'm warmly encouraged to hear that the, the residents will be compensated. Uh, have you any idea of what figure that's likely to be, Minister? Grateful to the, to, to the member, and, uh, and certainly the member uh, has been a persistent uh, advocate, uh, 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 along with his uh, party colleague, uh, Joanne Dobson, in, uh, in terms of um, representation for uh, this particular scheme, and, uh, and uh, I know that he particularly uh, has, uh, has promoted this and, and has pressed me to, to continue to make progress on it. I can say that you know, part of the system uh, of, the, of the vesting uh, process is, uh, is to work through uh, the issues uh, with the current occupants of residential and business premises that are due to be vested. Uh, in order to secure vacant possession. Um, my department is planning to, uh, to, to continue with that work. There are six, uh, six houses and a complex containing six commercial manufacturing businesses that will need to be demolished. All of these properties, except one dwelling, uh, are owned, by the, I understand, by the same landowner, with the majority currently tenanted. Um, officials will continue to liaise with utility companies to uh, complete preliminary works in advance of the main contract where possible, uh, and in particular some advance work by BT is likely to commence shortly and take a number of months to complete. Mr. Stephen Mutri. Thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, I am rather uh, disappointed but not surprised that the Minister gave a very party political answer. He will know that I and many others have lobbied and had meetings and raised questions in relation to this, as well as Mr Gardner and Mrs Dobson. Uh, this scheme will cost about £7 million. Pounds. Minister, when will it be delivered? Because it's been on the books for about 40 years, approximately. Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the uh, <coughs> member for his supplementary question, and I accept there has been widespread political uh, representations made for that. Uh, but, I, but, but I do say that I think that um, he's asked when, 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 when construction uh, start. Um, the, um, obviously, we have to get through uh, the processes from the 28th of, uh, 28th of uh, April and that deadline. Um, it remains, uh, construction of the scheme remains subject to the proposal continuing to have a satisfactory economic appraisal and the availability in future budget settlements. Um, if funding is available, it is expected that construction could commence in spring 2016 and would take approximately six months to complete. Uh, and I very much hope that we will continue to work successfully to, uh, to, to provide this scheme as quickly as possible. I am aware of the long-standing arguments over 40 years, the late Harold McCusker, when he was Member uh, of Parliament uh, for the whole of County Armagh, uh, was, uh, I, I think, um, advocating it then. So uh, I'm aware there is widespread public and political support for it. Lord Morrow. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Question number seven. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, following on from the legal challenge in 2013 to the A5 Western Transport Corridor, four draft reports have been developed uh, to assess any impacts on all designated environmentally sensitive sites. Uh, there were nine in total in the vicinity of the scheme and were appropriate mitigation measures are proposed. Public consultation uh, on uh, these reports concluded at the end of November 2014, and responses received will be taken into account as uh, the scheme development progresses. The next step is the publication of the draft vesting orders and draft direction order, uh, 
A new uh, environmental statement for the scheme will also be published at the same time as these draft orders. Publication of the draft orders and environmental statement will be followed by a six-week public consultation period. This is likely to lead uh, to the need for a second public inquiry on the scheme, and I can advise that it is my intention to uh, circulate a, a paper uh, on the scheme to executive colleagues in the coming weeks. That ends the period for listed questions. We now move to topical questions, and I call Ms. Megan Farron. Asking Corla, um, given the success of the Gullion Tourism Project and the Giants Lawrence Leave Gullion, what is the Minister planning to do to improve, improve roads in South Armagh, which are at an extremely dangerous level to drive on and aren't fit for growing visitors? Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to, to the member uh, for, for her, her topical question. Uh, and uh, uh, and I, I uh, am aware, certainly, that uh, uh, Steve Gullion uh, has increasingly been a popular venue for, for tourists and, and for local people <coughs> to enjoy leisure. And uh, it's important that, that access roads to that area uh, are properly maintained. She will know. Uh, that, uh, um, in terms of uh, my resource budget, that um, uh, it is under considerable pressure. And, uh, but we, we seek to maintain the network as best we can, not just at Slave Gullion, not just in South Armagh, not just in New and Armagh, but all over Northern Ireland. For I thank the Minister for his answer. I recognise that we're under pressure in terms of budgets, but I think budgets need to be used wisely and in the interests of the public. Um, and there is a need to upgrade roads in, in our area. Um, so I think the Minister needs to look at a strategic plan to upgrade roads across South Armagh, because if it's left or neglected for much longer, repairs will be much more and public safety will be at risk. I'm grateful to the member, uh, and, and whilst I uh, can accept some of the points uh, that, that she's made, I, I do have to say that the situation that I inherited in terms of the legacy uh, of uh, the state aid network uh, from, from her party colleague and indeed her immediate predecessor uh, was not one that was ideal either. And so uh, roads um, uh, and the maintenance of roads have been an issue for many, many years, not just during an election campaign. Mr. Robin Swallow. Thank you very much, Mr. President, Principal Deputy Speaker. Could the Minister provide an update on the flood alleviation scheme that has been proposed for Queen Street, Tim Street, and the Whitehurst Park in Ballymena? Grateful to the, uh, to the member. Um, the investigatory uh, report was presented uh, to the Flood Investment Planning Group on the 23rd of March 2015. The report identified a number of options to reduce uh, the flood risk uh, in the Tomb Road and Queen Street area of Ballymena. Um, it has been agreed that the preferred option outlined in the report should be taken through uh, the detailed uh, design uh, to delivery. Um, this will now be progressed as a joint NI water and transport NI project and will improve, uh, include improvements to the storm drainage system from the Wakehurst uh, estate, uh, increasing the capacity of the Northern Ireland water combined sewer system and separation of road drainage from NI water's combined sewer. In addition, uh, options to in, uh, introduce some improvements through a sustainable drainage system will be further uh, investigated. Mr Swan for supplementary. I thank the Minister for his update. As he well knows, this has been an ongoing pro problem for quite some time. Is he in a visage time frame um, for completion of this work? Grateful to the member and again for, uh, for, his, for his interest in it. Um, this will be a, um, a significant project uh, with a preliminary cost estimate of uh, 1.5 million. It is estimated that the project could be ready to commence in 12 months, uh, with a further 12-month period required for construction. Uh, this um, outline uh, time frame will be subject to obtaining any statutory approvals, land purchase and the availability of funding. However, uh, given the potential for further flooding at this location, this scheme will be prioritised accordingly. The member listed for question number three has withdrawn their name. I call Mr. Alistair Ross. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. I, I want to return to the area of community transport because I'm not sure that Ms. Sugden's question earlier was uh, answered adequately at all. So, can I ask the Minister if cuts to community transport have been applied proportionately across all of the providers in Northern Ireland? Grateful to the member for his, uh, his question. And, and uh, of course, we, uh, we will always seek uh, to apply. Uh, efficiencies and, and, and uh, cost savings uh, evenly across the board. 
it, sometimes it, it is dependent on the level of service in, in a particular area, uh, and so uh, we have to be mindful of that. But generally, uh, we would seek to do that. Mr. Ross, for supplement. Thank you. I, I take that rather long answer as a, as a longer way of saying no, they have not been applied proportionately across Northern Ireland. Given that that is the case, could the Minister perhaps outline the disparity between the, um, the lowest uh, price per trip and the highest price per trip across Northern Ireland and across the providers? Well, there, I mean, I have to say uh, the member will know that there are uh, uh, variations uh, in all of these things. Um, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm not in a position to, to outline, uh, outline to you in detail, and if you want to write to me uh, on the issue, I'll, I'll, I'll happily um, uh, uh, provide an answer, a more detailed answer. What I, what I do say is there, there is a significant challenge. My officials uh, will be working through that challenge to address it and work with groups and users in order that um, we can minimise impact to, to the frontline services because I, I, I realise the importance uh, of those services to a great many people in the rural area but also in the urban area too. Ms Palm Cameron. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister for an update on the grass cutting schedule for the current money area of Newton Abbey? Grateful to the, uh, to the uh, member for her uh, topical question. And indeed, the member will know that the resource budget, uh, as a result of budgetary pressures, is, is under severe pressure. Um, and uh, at the moment, we are simply carrying out work that is uh, absolutely uh, necessary. And you know that is that is likely to cause problems. Where uh, I've done that uh, under instruction, uh, under my instruction, that, that we continue to, to do that until we see the outcome, at least, of the June monitoring situation. Uh, we're, because I'm, I'm conscious that uh, any impact uh, w will be se set on frontline services. Can I say that um, these issues and maintenance are not simply uh, issues that can be um, washed away, uh, both grass cutting, gully emptying, street lighting, all of those um, issues are day-to-day -day services that the public expect, that the public need, that we need to provide, but we need to be adequately funded for. Cameron for supplementary. I thank the Minister for his, his answer um, thus far. And given that the grass area along the Fairview Road in Newton Abbey um, was only cut back <coughs> excuse me, once last year and hasn't been cut this year to date as yet, uh, would he agree that the reduction in uh, grass cutting will have a detrimental effect on the area for the residents and indeed for the enjoyment of their own locality? Well, I. I Except the, the, the point that the member makes, and, and, and where possible, we, we, we seek in rural areas to uh, make at least two cuts, and in urban areas, um, five cuts per year. That, at, at the moment, in terms of the budgetary position, is not possible to do. Now, um, you know, these, these issues are, are, are well known uh, and uh, have been talked about and debated, not only in, in, in this chamber, but around the executive table, and indeed. The Committee for Regional Development uh, is also aware of, uh, of the pressures, and I have to say to colleagues in this House that uh, I need their support to ensure that adequate funding is provided to the resource budget of DRD so that these services, which are much needed, which are important, uh, that they can continue in, in a fashion to which people have become expect um, uh, expectant of. Lord Moore. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, can I ask the Minister today, can he give an assurance to the House that there is a fair and equitable enforcement of parking regulations across our towns and cities and villages in Northern Ireland? I am happy to confirm that uh, it is my belief that it is fair, both fair and transparent uh, and that, uh, that that system um, is not uh, either um, politically <coughs> or socially uh, blind uh, in any sense. Lord Morrow for supplementary. Principal Deputy Speaker, can I thank the Minister for his answer, but can he then explain to us why it appears that some of our towns, which are twice the population, twice the size of other towns, that there is enforcement going on, and yet these towns, there is no enforcement no parking tickets ever issued, 
and indeed in one, for instance, five mile town, we had four parking attendants operating on the one day. Grateful to the member for his, um, uh, his, his, his supplementary. Uh, and, and the member, uh, I think, is on public record and, in fact, has, has, uh, uh, has set down both assembly questions and oral questions, on, particularly on the issue of uh, enforcement in Coal Island and other areas. Can I say, in terms of Five Mile Town, generally um, uh, two traffic uh, attendants uh, employed by NSL uh, patrol streets in Five Mile Town, um, and uh, uh, with uh, for enforcement reasons, uh, two or three times a week, um, uh, he has suggested uh, at one point a figure of four. Um, and uh, if he wants me to to investigate that particular incident, assuming it was. Uh, an isolated one, uh, I'm happy to do so. But let me absolutely state that uh, enforcement, uh, when it takes place, is done on an even and fair and transparent basis. And I can think of uh, a great many towns, um, you know, other than Coal Island, where, where, there, where there are little or no incidents uh, of uh, or enforcement cases. And much of that is down to the good sense of people um, in that area, obeying the, uh, the various restrictions. Oh, Mr. Trevor Clark. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, can I ask the Minister maybe if he could give us an update in relation to the York Gate interchange? Grateful to the, uh, to the member for his, um, uh, his, his question and indeed uh, his, his interest. And, and he will know that I recently uh, announced my intention to hold. A public inquiry into the proposals for the York Street interchange. Uh, the scheme is expected to cost in the region of 125 million and 165 million. The public inquiry is likely to be scheduled uh, for the late autumn uh, 2015, and uh, construction uh, completion uh, of the proposed project would be expected to take up up to three years. I think it is a scheme that uh, I know members of this house, members of uh, his regional development committee and indeed members of the executive, are keen to see if we can make progress, because I think it does. It is one of the keys uh, of, of unlocking some of the congestion <coughs> issues uh, around uh, Belfast. Well, Mr Clark, for supplement. Uh, can I thank the Minister for that answer? And I would have to agree that many of us would like to see changes in relation to the York Gate. However, the Minister is aware that, I mean, I think it's something that's encouraged in Northern Ireland in terms of entrepreneurship, that someone has made a presentation to his former special advisor in relation to an alternative to that scheme, which, which would save in excess of £100 million. When will the, your department take, its, take his uh, suggestion seriously and actually sit down and work out the methodology behind that to see, I mean, given the theme today has been, in terms of your budget, an opportunity here to save in excess of £100 million? I'm grateful to the um, member for his, for, for his question and in order to clarify uh, things. Um, the Department <coughs> on, on, have on several occasions uh, sought details of the proposal from uh, Mr Pascal Lynch um, and, uh, so that it can be assessed. Um, however, as yet we have been unable to review uh, Mr Lynch's proposals um, as he has yet to provide uh, those details. However, I, I, in order to try and move things on, uh, I have agreed to uh, um, uh, to conduct to, or to have conducted a qualitative assessment of uh, the proposals, uh, and that will be undertaken by an experienced traffic engineer uh, with knowledge of the area to ascertain that there would be value in progressing them. Um, I have also taken uh, the precaution, and the member will, uh, I, I think, appreciate this, that, uh, that this assessment would be managed from a, a, a different section engineer from the engineer who brought forward other proposals so that we can independently assess and, and weigh up uh, the proposals uh, that, uh, uh, of Mr Lynch. Before I call Sandra Overend for her topical question, as the Minister's Assembly, Private Secretary and in line with the protocol, I remind the member that their question should relate specifically to a constituency matter in which they are directly involved. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. And considering the importance of the of the A6 to to my constituency and to both to businesses and to commuters travelling to Belfast, um, can I ask the minister for an update on the A6? 
grateful to the uh, member for, for her question um, and I uh, can confirm that consultants were commissioned in, in July 2003 to examine the route between Randallstown and Castle Dawson and develop a preferred line uh, for a new dual carriageway. In February 2012, the inspector recommended that a junction located east of Bells Hill Road would be a more acceptable alternative, which my officials subsequently uh, developed. A planning uh, application to construct this uh, junction was granted on the 3rd of December 2014. Um, a vesting order uh, for the east of Bells Hill Road junction proposal was published on the 9th of February 2015, and the closing date for objections was the 20th of March 2015. A number of objections have been received and are currently being assessed. The notice of intention to proceed and direction order for the scheme as a whole was published in March 2011. Uh, vesting orders to uh, compulsorily uh, acquire the land uh, required to build the dual carriageway scheme will remain in draft and will only be made when funding for the scheme has been uh, confirmed. Uh, that is really the up-to-date position. Time is up. Uh, members will wish to take their ease while we change the top table.